Sure. Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Winner's match time here for Group C of the FX Open Invitational Series. I am Unstable, joined by Lurillion. Let's get straight into it. We've got TSL Revival up against NS Hoso's San. On Ohana, take it away Lurillion, and let's get this game underway. Yeah, let's get this uh, game started. In the bottom right spawn position, we've got TSL Revival, the blue Zerg player from Team SCB Live. In the top left spawn position, we've got Anas Hoso's son, who is doing something out of the ordinary. He is getting a pylon in his main base. He knows he's playing Revival, right? Yeah, does he know he's playing Zerg? <laughs> <That's> oh, even... <laughs> <laughs> um... uh, even, even still, it's still a weird position to get that pylon in. Why, if he would be playing uh, Protoss or Terran, there's no reason to get that pylon behind the mineral line. So I'm very curious what this pylon is going to be there for. I know a lot of uh, other players, a player like Sasse, for example, always gets a, a pylon in his main base before, uh, you know, while Forge expanding in the mm. case of a six pool. But this is not that. This is not a Forge expand, I don't think. This is, is this the Nexus first versus Zerg? It quite possibly could be. Uh, actually, because Revive, what's Revival doing? Right, it's too early to see what he's doing. He's going. Cool oh, it's a pool. Oh, it's a pool. That doesn't look good for San. Unless what's he doing? <laughs> he is going Nexus first. Oh, but with the pot, even if you go Nexus first on this map, like, wouldn't you put the pylon on the low ramp anyway to, to wall off with a with a forge? Or am I yeah, just completely losing my mind? <laughs> yeah, you are completely losing your mind. Or San is completely losing his mind. I'm not sure what the thought process behind that pylon in the main base is at all. He is going to drop a second pylon right now at the choke point, I would imagine, and start that wall off. You know you want to come up. Start start making sense to me right now, baby. And no, <laughs> it's going to build the forge in the main base as well. Uh, in, instead of dropping a pylon and then building the forge, he's going to make the forge in the main base. And now he's going to start the pylon. And this overlord is going to come in there and be like, WTF, mate. Yeah, pretty much. Although it does make, like, if he's trying to trip uh, revival out that could work a little bit as he's going up and he's like whoa what's going on there we go but he did get that pull first uh, a very risky build to do to be honest like very very risky build to do but it's paid off for him at least here now yeah it's a uh, it's a risky build to, to go for indeed if uh, you know revival as soon as he saw that pylon that pylon and no forge and no nothing there as a wall off he could have made six to eight zerglings and he would have been easily able to get into the main base there's no way that cannon would have been able to finish in time for uh, the Zergling, to prevent the Zerglings from getting in. So a uh, risky build by San, but it is going to pay off. And he got that Nexus ridiculously early right now. Uh, he does ha he did still have to get the Forge. You know, there's been a lot of builds <clears throat> recently where Protoss skip out on the Forge and they get uh, a Gateway straight away. And as a result, they get a faster Cybernetic score, a faster uh, Warpgate research. And with that faster Warpgate research, they can really catch the Zergs who go for three bases really quickly off guard because they're expecting, you know, to uh, for a four gate to hit at minute eight, for example, and a six gate to hit at minute nine. And all of a sudden, all those timings are going to be a minute quicker before because the forge was skipped. But some, he still got the forge. He's still he's pretty much done a normal forge expand, but instead he made a panel in the main and his forge in the main. Other than that, I don't really see an advantage. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think of what the advantage of putting it in the main is, other than to try and freak out Revival, but... The fence against a uh, six pool is going to be a lot, 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 lot easier, because you won't true. lose your first pool, and you won't lose your forge, and the defense against the seven pool will be easier as well, but... Ah, uh, yes. I think you've just nailed know. it right there. That's, Revival that, that's isn't really a player known for that, though. Yeah, not really. That's, that's very interesting, but anyway, we've got... Uh, speed on the way <clears throat> for Revival now. He did manage to get that third base down after the pylon block. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let's see what the follow-up for this for Sun is. He's already getting plus one, so it's likely we're going to see a, ge a, a gateway timing. We've got robotics facility on the way. I, I really do like the immortal pushes that have been coming out recently, but a lot of Zergs have been able to, to fend it off every now and then now. It's not as much of a, a clear win. Kind of, kind of build that it used to be. <laughs> no, you're you're definitely right about that. Unstable. The uh, the immortal sentry build, ju just like uh, the one 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 and uh, the muta play, uh, the two base muta play. 
Pearl struggled with so much. You know, they're getting figured out. People know how to how to deal with uh, the Immortals. They know how to deal with uh, large sentry counts. They get the right unit composition with uh, a few Zerglings sprinkled in, a lot of Roaches, and they engage in the middle of the map before any of the additional Warpins uh, come in. Oh, it looks like a Stalker for Sun is going to die here in the middle of the map unstable. Yes, definitely going to die without taking anything out, uh, I'm afraid. It's so hard to micro a Stalker when killing Zerglings. It's pretty much impossible to focus one down. And that's a nice pickoff for Revival in this early game, making six Lings. They definitely paid for themselves. Yeah, we do have an Immortal on the way here for Sun. He's got three more gateways in the main, of course. So we are, looks like we're going to see some Something like that. Probably not a warp prism. Actually, no. What am I talking about? San used warp prisms in every game we've seen so far today. <laughs> <laughs> he loves his warp prisms. He did queue up a second immortal, and he's not working on those rocks at the natural on stable. So that makes me think that he is not going to be looking to expand to a third base. And no, there are the additional gateways. Two more being started in the main base, and we're probably going to see one more. But uh, that's the usual, at least. Seven gateways and a robo. Mm -hmm. This probe. This probe wants to build a gateway. Probe. No, <laughs> looks like he's gonna... Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, I like this wall off, actually. Like, yeah, he's got the really... cannon, and then he's stuck the complete... Like, there's no way any kind of Ling run by is gonna get in that main base. Like, not a chance. No, the... <laughs> no, so even in the case that he has to sacrifice his natural, he can fall back to his main base in, in a weird base trade scenario. That's gonna help him a lot. <clears throat> because base trades have been... A bit of an answer that Zergs have been going for more and more against this uh, Immortal push. They just go for the base trade. And they will usually win the base trade uh, as well because, mm. yeah, it's, you know, you're Zerg, you're, you're mobile, <laughs> you're fast, and you win base trades. Protoss yeah, never wins base trades. It's like the bottom of the food chain in terms of base trades is Protoss. <laughs> Did you think? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Uh, we do see a War Prism on the way now as well, Sun. Moving out, there's a lot of sentries, a lot of energy here. Uh, and there's a lot of roaches on the field though, but those immortals, are gonna, they have plus one as well here, literally, and so it's going to be very difficult for Revival to hold this off, and he's actually going to get caught with some uh, rallied roaches as well. He's Oh my god, he's going to get into the natural, and he's going to force field that ramp. Oh no, there's such a bad position to be in for Revival. One immortal might die though, no, it's not good force fields here, the immortal will... Nah, the, that that's first immortal is definitely going to fall, yeah. and there it goes, blast to pieces. Some reinforcements coming in from the back for Sun. Sun is actually looking quite strong here. Yeah, now the War Prism's joined the fray, he's not going to lose another Immortal, he's even going to be able to warp in more units as well. Uh, the supply is 120 to 87 in favor of Revival, but he just doesn't have the unit composition to really deal with this stuff. And look at this, San is moving up yet again, up into the natural, he can force field that if he wants to and take out all the tech structures. Is that what he's going to do? One. Unless he doesn't have enough energy for it, but there's so many Zealots here now. And the Immortals in the backup, they're going to take down those two spine crawlers. More and more roaches coming through. There's the extra force field on the bottom of the ramp. And I think this is the end for Revival in this game. Yeah, the Immortal sentry push a little bit too much for Revival here. Uh, two Immortals still left alive. 10 kills on one and 15 on the other. These Immortals definitely yeah, uh, worth their waiting gold in this game. The uh, hatchery is now taking fire. The roads are just not enough anymore. The rocks between the natural and the third base have not been taken down for Revival either. And that would have given him an another avenue to you know, reinforce that uh, army in the main base and come from three different angles. But the rock still being up, of course, being a big advantage for San. Revival now down to 80 supply. He's still making roaches. Five uh, just now coming out. But those roaches are going to die so fast against those two immortals with plus one. And this game is definitely going to end. And the first game of the winner's match is going to be taken momentarily here by NSF of San. The DSL Revival will have to, uh, you know, come up with a plan to win game two. Yeah, it does look like it. There's the GG coming out from Revival. Alrighty, so let's jump into game number two without further ado. We'll be right back after a two-minute commercial break.